Hey everybody, happy Friday, we made it. Another week uh, and all of us here together just hanging out doing gaming stuff. I opened the choice of topics today to the Twitterverse and I got a really cool uh, topic from Paul Shiner that we're gonna, we're gonna cover today. Uh, Paul says, the wandering monster mechanic, is it an effective tool or just slow the game down with unnecessary combat? When to use or not to? Traps, when to use or not to. One 10-foot pit trap and PCs are looking for traps every 10 feet for the rest of the dungeon, slowing everything down. I decided just to use all of this today in one topic that we're going to call Rodos, R-O-D-O-H-S. Uh, since I just spent the last week reading uh, through Into the Borderlands, which I'll be reviewing tomorrow, I felt like I had a fun refresher on some of these topics already, specifically wandering monsters and traps, uh, or as I, I like to call them, random occasional delving occupational hazards, or RODOs, R-O-D-O-H-S, because who doesn't love an acronym, especially on a Friday? I don't know if that works or not. We're gonna go with it. You gotta love acronyms. Uh, so let's let's talk about what you know traps and uh, wandering monsters are in the in the first place. Uh, let's break this up. We'll do traps and we'll do mon wandering monsters and kind of go into both. So for traps, I think what they are is pretty self-explanatory. In a dungeon. Uh, uh, in a dungeon, you know, the, the purpose of the dungeon or is to be guarding something typically. You know, I usually split out dungeons from caverns. Like uh, a dungeon uh, that is being designed to either keep people uh, in or keep people from entering, you know, keeping people away from something. I learned I learned the lessons in uh, in playing Orcs Must Die and Orcs Must Die 2, that traps are a great way to kill, wound, or maim. Anything that's just trying to come in and like get your goodies or free your goodies uh, from, from the dungeon. Obviously, you also have on the flip side in caverns and caves, you would have maybe the, the traps aren't exactly uh, purposefully built. It's you know, uh, it, it's weak floors. It's uh, mine subsidence, things like that. But for the purposes of this conversation, we're we'll discussing traps like pit traps, spikes, you know, hidden crossbows, uh, poison, stuff like that. That's that's you know, someone put it there. These uh, are you know, these are set pieces for dungeons, right? They offer challenges to parties, thieves, and rogues and bards. And when, when should you use them? Well, in my opinion, whenever you're trying to create a deterrence for intruders into the base or into the dungeon or the castle, they make sense. And when there's a logical reason for this deterrence. So for instance, it makes sense for a pitfall trap to be in an open and clear hallway or seemingly open and clear. Whereas it probably doesn't make sense to have it in a villain's bedroom. I'm a also a big believer that traps shouldn't just require roles like perception checks or search checks or or things like that to find them a, 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 any player even a non-thief or rogue player should be able to confirm uh you know whether a trap is there by setting the trap off you know maybe a 10 foot pole or a grappling hook obviously they're gonna have to face whatever ramifications or repercussions come from that for instance if the 10 foot pole you know uh, engages a pit trap and it's in front of them, that's great. They just cleared the trap just through smart thinking. Uh, but if, you know, the 10 foot, they, they trigger it and it's happening above them and a gelatinous cube falls on them, well, you know, that's where you kind of want to have a rogue around, right? Uh, but, you know, I, I do believe that there should be some, definitely some logic to these traps. They should make sense and setting them off should make sense too. There should be an obvious trigger that the players can can finagle with, uh, you know, without having to require a thief or rogue there. Just my opinion. Um, now, I think the trap should also be unique and interesting when possible. You know, a ten foot pit is fine and spikes are fine, but why have that when you can have a ten foot pit full of kittens with razor blades on them? That is way more interesting. Uh, if you want to find some great traps, I brought out one of my favorite books that I own, and this is uh, through Goodman Games. This is 
Grimtooth's Ultimate Traps Collection. Yes, this is a hefty tome, uh, and yes, this this book uh, probably will set you back a bit. However, uh, I took the cover off of it. It has five five tomes within this larger tome of Grimtooth awesomeness. Now, I will say that uh, this this collection, these traps, they are not fair. These traps will wreck your party and ruin them in ways that are just horrific. But they're a lot of fun. So, I mean, I think it depends on the campaign, too, of when you should be pulling out Grimtooth. Just set this book next to you when you're gaming, though, and see what your players do. They're going to love it. Um, let's move on to random monsters for a second here. Uh, I'm a lot more torn on random monsters and wandering monsters than I am on the inclusion of traps uh, in a in a dungeon. I get traps. I know what they're to, they're to do. When I'm populating a dungeon, I usually don't deal with random or wandering uh, encounters. I will just, you know, put things in different areas, and then if the players are near those areas, that could trigger, uh, you know, creatures or entities in those areas coming out to investigate. But since since they're they're in into the borderlands, um, since they're in this book and they're in a lot of adventures, let's go over them. The thing is, I think that wandering monsters make more sense outdoors. They're something that you would encounter if you're doing a hex crawl, be it, um, you know, Peril of the Purple Planet or, uh, you know, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Isle of Dread. Makes more sense in those instances. In dungeons, I don't know. Um, when they're inside a dungeon, a uh, cavern, or a crypt, they, they, there should be some kind of realism, even this is, though this is fantasy, some kind of realism surrounding why they're there. Uh, that these monsters should be a reflection of the ecosystem in the, the dungeon. And I'm going to, I have this marked for a reason. Uh, let's take a look at what's in uh, B1 in Search of the Unknown. So I open, open your books to page 29. <laughs> and let's go into the caverns of uh, Quazquitan. And the Wandering Monsters, check every third turn. One and six, roll a six-sided die. If a monster is indicated, roll a six-sided die again and compare the list below. So you have one to four orcs, one to two giant centipedes, one to six kobolds, one to two troglodytes, two to five giant rats, or one to two berserkers. So as from, as from the glorious tome that we'll discuss tomorrow. <laughs> so, uh, well, why are they there? Why are they in these these caverns in these in these in this dungeon? So the giant centipedes and the giant rats they make perfect sense. It's clear that they are part of the ecology. The orcs and berserkers they require a little more of coming up with a backstory of why they got in there. First off, how they get past any traps that are in the dungeon, uh, and second off, are they searching for loot? What's their motivation? Give me your motivation, orcs and berserkers. We need to know it. Kobolds and troglodytes, maybe they're trying to nest in the dungeon. But if that's the case, why are they on the move? Are they hunting? You know, this seems like a really small area to live in. I always think back about dungeons and whatnot to the first... Um, you know, for me, one of my big inspirations for dungeons was was Ultima Underworld and Ultima Underworld 2. Uh, I, I love those games. They're by Origin... Uh, uh, you know, that was an awesome game company in the 90s that Electronic Arts bought out and destroyed. Uh, but back in the 90s with, with, those, with Ultima Underworld, the first one, you know, you're in this prison dungeon and there is a full ecology and full tribes and civilizations living down there. And it all made sense. I think wandering monsters should make sense as well. Uh, now, that said... Take out the fact of whether they make sense or not, and let's talk about why they're in adventures in the first place. Now, if you're a, a, a video game player, you know, you, you if you're wandering around a, monster, a, a dungeon, there's monsters there. You have to deal with them, right? But why are they moving about? So in my opinion, uh, you know, wandering monsters do three things mechanically when it comes down to tabletop role-playing. The first thing is, since they are the encounters are often time-based, for instance, in here, every 30 minutes you're rolling, they create incentive for the party to stop dawdling and move on with the action. Uh, wandering monsters also create attrition amongst your PCs and they force the expenditure of resources as the party you know, gets further into the quest, uh, but before the big bad or funnel lair. I gotta say, uh, 
I'm very comfortable getting ready to run this with 5th edition, hopefully in the near future. I... Th- I forgot how deadly some of these like OD and D modules or adventures were, uh, you know, even compared to DCC modules, these things are brutal. So I don't know how resources you're, you're expending. You're expending your magic users only sleep spell and th- thus their only spell of the day. Uh, in some games or styles of gameplay, wandering monsters off, also offer added experience points to your party if you need those. So whether or not you know they're necessary in your game really comes down to your particular campaign style. If you have players that want to smash things up and destroy, they want that full-on Diablo experience of point-blank shotting arrows into monsters over and over and over and over again yeah they they need to be in there wandering monsters should be in there they make things exciting uh if you use experience points as opposed to milestones so they're they need to rack up xp to level up not just have so many sessions then then yeah you want to consider including some wandering monsters if your game focuses on exploration or discovery uh over combat maybe leave them out or minimize them or maybe set them up instead of having be time-based, pick one of the random monster encounters that's interesting and put them in the dungeon. I think putting orcs, like a a, a militant group of orcs in a dungeon's awesome because they're probably there for a reason and maybe they're willing to offer something in trade for the two groups to go their separate ways. That leads us to the third reason to put them in there. If your game focuses on negotiation and diplomacy, you know, give these monsters some personality. If your party includes a uh, druid, a bard, a paladin, and a sorcerer, yeah, in that that party makeup maybe, that's like leaning on the talky-talky and less on the fighty-fighty, they they might want to have a chat with these orcs and maybe maybe hire them to do something. The great thing about all these questions, and I got to really thank Paul for for sending these over, or all these 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 points, is there's no wrong answer here. It's all how your particular play style and the play style of your PCs, how it all matches up and how it all mashes up. Ultimately, the inclusion of traps and random encounters in the dungeons is up to you as a game master, dungeon master, or judge. For me, I could really go either way. It depends on what the party's composition is and what the player personalities you know come up with. In cook up and uh i i've used them in i've, I've used both i use a lot use a lot of traps and i've used a lot of wandering monsters but on the flip side i often use them a little differently than the adventure sort of you know design like i said i tend to pick the ones i like and i still put them on the map of when they're going to occur rather than having them be time-based is that random who knows? Probably not. Not the way other GMs would do it. But how do you do it? So if you like to tinker with wandering monsters or traps, you know, toss that in the comments below. If you have other good resources to pull from besides, you know, Grimtooth or, uh, or Into the Borderlands, then toss that in the comments below also. So play nice, kiddos and friendos. We'll see you tomorrow as we go into the Borderlands in, in more depth. All right, take care and have a great night.